Hello everybody, my name is Brian. Thank you so much for joining me. Got a couple of people with their cameras on, Ada and Michael, thank you so much. If I could see some more cameras, that would be super cool. So what we're gonna be printing on today is pants. So by popular demand, everyone was asking about the pants last week. So that's what we've got going on today. So we have a short clip for the pre-treating of the pants that we recorded ahead of time so that we don't have to do a little free cam through the through the whole office. So we'll go ahead and play that here. All right, so for our pants episode today, we're gonna start with sweatpants. This one's gonna be gray. We're gonna do a black one and some jeans. All of the garments that we're gonna be doing today are dominantly cotton. You always wanna just double check that tag. If it's dominantly polyester, you're gonna to need to use a different pre-treat than what we're using today. So we're using the dark cotton pre-treat on our settings on the direct treater dual. For volume, we're gonna have it set to two. We're going to have the, the direction on bi-directional and then we're going to spray the whole tray size. So we want to take a look at the garment and see where we want the print to go. So in this case, I want the print kind of mid-thigh. So I want it to go right around here. So I need to make sure that when I put this on that it's going to have that area on here. Um, in this case, these sweats are rather large, so we wouldn't be able to do both legs at the same time. Ideally, you would want to optimize it and see if you can pre-treat both together. Okay, right about there should do. And then start. Okay, so now we'll go ahead and take it out and take it over to the heat press. See, this kind of overspray is not optimal. Ideally, we wanna have it so that both legs will encompass this tray and we won't have this kind of waste. All right, so we're over at our heat press now. Let's go ahead and load it on. In this case, it's gonna be pretty easy to just line up your pre-treated area since it's pretty obvious where the pre-treat is. I do want that crotch seam over the edge so that it's not gonna make a funny press mark. Everything else is gonna sit pretty flat. Get a silicone curing sheet, clamp it down. We want a medium high pressure, four, five, or six. That is a nine. We want a medium high pressure, four, five, or six. So we've got our pressure at five. We're gonna do the first press, 10 seconds. Flip the paper, and then 20 seconds at a time until it's dry to the touch. We're gonna give it another 10 seconds and I reckon it's done. Okay. All right, so we're gonna feel it. Our print area is nice and dry. This area where it didn't dry, that's okay. We're printing here, so that's not gonna be a problem. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and repeat this process for all the other garments that we're gonna work with today. Again, ideally, if you have smaller garments or even larger garments, you wanna make sure that it encompasses the entire spray area so you can make the most of that spray. In this case, the area that we're planning to print on is a little bit longer, so we can't rotate it sideways and still get the length that we're looking for out of the print. So let's go ahead and spray this one. You always wanna make sure that you can pick it up with the pre-treat facing you so it's easy once you get over to the heat press. Just like before, 10 seconds at first, 20 seconds at a time until it's dry to the touch. Flip the sheet after each press. Okay, and I'm just gonna give this one more press. 
I'm judging that based off of the steam coming off. I don't really need to feel it. Okay, there we go. All right, so now let's go and do the jeans. With the jeans, you need to be a lot more deliberate with uh, where you put everything because there are metal fastenings on here. Pre-treat and metal don't really agree, so you want to keep the exposure to the, the metal fastenings to a minimum. So there we go. It doesn't need to be perfect. just needs to be flat where you want the pre-treat to go. And start. Okay, so as you can see on the jeans, it's a lot more difficult to tell where the pre-treat is. So you need to keep a mental track of where that pre-treat is laying on the garment. Okay. Jeans are a little bit heavier, so I need to kind of hold it in place until I clamp it down. Okay, so that should be all set. All right, so now that it's finished being pre-treated, let's go print on it. So was that very clear to everybody? Is everyone pretty clear on the process? It's not too uh, foreign to what we already do. Um, so I wanna make sure everybody's on the same page before we go ahead and continue. Let's check chat. Why do you flip the paper? So in cases where the um, either the pre-treat or the ink is uh, very damp, the paper will wrinkle uh, and it will press wrinkles into your garment. In addition, sometimes when you're using a lot of pre-treat, particularly for things like sweats, the paper can pick up a little bit of pre-treat and when you're pressing it again, it may basically reapply a separate layer of pre-treat to it. Michael, you saying sorry? What are you saying sorry for? You got nothing to be sorry about. Uh, Canon, go ahead. Yeah, real quick. Uh, did you have the same saturation, um, the same saturation uh, levels uh, for all three materials? That's right. Yeah, we had it on the level three, two direction. Okay, level three, two direction. Okay, got it. And then yep. that the second garment, I didn't hear which one was that. Was that polyester or cotton, the black one? They're all using the cotton pre-treat. Okay. So... Uh, the two sweats, they are 60% cotton, 40% polyester, and then the jeans are jean material. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Sure thing. Okay, all right. So let's go ahead and move on. So one big thing that you guys were really screaming about last week uh, is, you know, other ways to utilize our sleeve platen. So this is why we uh, decided to go for pants this time. So obviously sleeve platen, sleeves are the obvious choice, but we can also do pants and it's basically just the shape is uh, comparable. With these particular ones, I think we could almost do the adult platen because these are really big sweats, but um, for demonstration purposes, we'll be doing it this way. So just like before um, with the regular adult platen, you tuck it in, start from the center, work to the sides, and then get down on eye level and make sure it's nice and flat. Everything extra, uh, because there's so much extra, you just need to make sure that it's below the print area um, and out of these side channels. So all of this extra stuff is fine as long as it's lower than the print surface. If it's higher than when the head moves over right here when it's initializing, you might get a head strike in that position. So you wanna just make sure it's nice and flat as much as possible. Okay, that's looking pretty good. So we're gonna do our height adjustment. All right. And we're gonna go over to the computer now. Okay. All right, so uh, here we're going to do this cute little lollipop design. I didn't have that many um, vertical designs. I didn't prep any, 
So we're, we're doing this cute little lollipop. Um, any other designs? The proportions you're looking for are four and a quarter wide by 17 tall is your maximum print area for this uh, sleeve platen. So keep that in mind when you're choosing your graphic. So we've got the image here. We're going to go to environment. In this case, we're using the plus. So we're going to choose the plus quality mode. And we're going to do dark cotton. Since it's not a white garment, it's kind of a gray. I do want that white underbase so we get the best colors possible. Uh, and we did use the dark pre-treat. So there's the pre-treat to support that white underbase. Uh, next, we're going to go over into the Q-Rip window. The image is already 4.2 by 9.4. So it's about as wide as I can allow on this platen. Um, position will always be top center regardless of the platen that you use. We're going to select the port, go to properties, and since we're already printing a little bit down on the leg, I'm just going to add a little bit of a margin uh, so that we're not printing at the curve or the edge of the platen where it curves uh, and you don't get that little like fuzzy edge. And in this case, I really want the white in the lollipop to pop. So I'm going to go ahead and do the fuzziness to 15. Some of the environments that you guys have may default the fuzziness. Uh, if not, it's nice to set it to 15. That's the value that I find works best. And then highlight 80, 85 would probably be pretty good. We're going to do a print preview. That's how it's going to look. If we want to see it on like a gray, there we go looking cute and we'll click print and okay all right so that's going to go ahead and run um, in the meantime did anybody have any other questions that we can address not even necessarily about pants specifically canon go ahead yeah so i had an oddball question on the white ink so okay. when you have your white ink bottles, okay, and I tried to, you know, shake them, you know, the ones that are just sitting in, on storage. Okay. I've tried to shake those. But one of the things I have problems with is really getting it mixed. So it's okay to have some residue at the bottom of the bottle when you're actually pouring them into the, um, into the um, ink wells for the back of the uh, machine. So you're saying that when you are refilling the bottles on the back of the machine, there is residue at the bottom of the bottles on the printer or in the bottle that you're pouring from yeah in the bottom pouring from even though i've mixed it shook it really well and try to circulate as best i can and let i'll let it sit for an hour before pouring it into the ink bottles on the machine okay and i get some yeah, residue that, is that okay that approach is fine um it's going to be very difficult to get all of the ink out of the bottles just because of basically surface tension is i think what's pretty much holding some of the ink hostage in there okay. um, but letting it sit and then pouring out the rest is perfectly fine well the reason why is i was more concerned about you know having chunks of stuff going through the line and clogging the dampers but uh, you know i didn't no. know you know and i didn't want to stir that up in there before i pour it in so i just wanted i didn't know if, if, if we're going to lose some pigment for the white ink or not by having that sediment on the bottom no uh when you shake it it's largely uh reintroduced what's left at the bottom is likely just a little bit of just normal white ink not necessarily pure pigment or anything like that okay it great be, yeah it should be mixed up quite well if you do like a normal shake okay great i appreciate it thank you yeah sure thing that was a really great question uh trudy ann asks unrelated question of course did you find out anything about the new windows 11 os update i knew that was the question that i was missing i'm so sorry I, I, I was, I followed up about uh, last week, I think we were talking about um, the light fastness of the, of the canvas. I did get not necessarily an answer, but we don't have data on the light fastness. And I was, I knew there was another question. I just couldn't remember. I'm so sorry. If uh, I know we have some of the, some of our other training team, if we could get someone, if one of the trainers could chime in. Uh, if we have an answer for the Windows 11 um, being okay, could we get someone to chime in there? Maybe Jim. I'll, I'll call you out, Jim. 
Okay. In the meantime, yeah, Brian, I just yep. actually just checked uh, with R and D, but we don't have an answer yet. Okay. So All right. Inconclusive, Trudy Ann. Thank you so much, though. Thanks, Jim. Appreciate sure. it. Okay. All right. So we're going to move on to the black sweatpants. It's going to be the same process. So you just tuck it in. Now, one thing I did want to draw attention to, since we've got the close-up cam here, um, when I was pressing it, I learned a very valuable lesson. Uh, you need to take the pockets out, turn them inside out when you're doing the pre-treat and pressing. Otherwise, you'll get that little uh, crystallized pre-treat thing. I don't know if that's showing up on the camera, if you guys can really see that. It, uh, it looks really bad. So you would just turn the pocket inside out for that, and then you wouldn't really have that issue. Um, so, so you guys can learn from my mistake. Uh, so let's go ahead and get this on there. Are you going to add more white base to it? Uh, we could. We could do one with um, a stronger white underbase if you guys want to see that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so we'll go ahead and get this all set. So because it's a different garment, I don't want to bank on the fact that it came from the same source, that it's going to be the same thickness. So I'm just going to go ahead and set the height again. Double check that it's nice and flat. Okay, looking good. I'm gonna go back over to my screen here. All right, so let's get a different lollipop for this one. So I'm gonna grab this one. Oh, what's going on there? Okay. So we're going to do the same environment. So we're going to do the dark cotton. This one's going to be a little bit shorter just due to the way that I cropped it. But there is um, a little bit of blank space at the top of the image. So I'm not going to add a margin this time. Okay, so rather than adding a margin, I'm just going to skip ahead. If you want to increase the resolution of the white underbase, you go to device options. Make sure you're looking at your white underbase. Resolution 2880 by 1440. And then OK. And then in this case, because we're adding a much stronger white underbase, I don't feel the need to uh, adjust the highlight at all. So that should be sufficient. Uh, let's take a look at the print preview, make sure everything's looking normal, and then go ahead and print it. All right, so that's all set. Um, while this one prints, uh, anyone else have any questions? Did you guys ever try the, uh, the canvas since last week? Did anyone give it a shot? I have a question. Oh, sure, sure thing. Charlene? Yeah. How did, right. you, how did you grab that image and put it just single? So what I did, um, if we can pull up the, is it still sharing the screen, Mauricio? Yes. Okay. All right. So what we did, let me go ahead and, so I have one image that's uh, the whole, it's three different lollipops. You go to the selection tool. And then you just mm -hmm. click and, click and drag to outline the one that you want. Right click and crop. Okay. Okay. Because I, I always do it in the, in the other program. I have to pass. Yeah. Like That'll likely be the easiest and most consistent method um, to make sure it's like the the downside to doing it this way is. Uh, like you see how when I cropped it here, there's a little bit of space on this side and a lot more space on this side on the canvas. So that'll be a drawback if you're trying to really get something lined up just right. Uh, that can that can definitely uh, work against you. So yeah, ultimately doing it in like Photoshop or something will be ideal. All right. And I did make a, I, I that's what I'm doing, canvas. So... That's what I like to do. Oh, okay. If, if awesome. you guys want to see it. Yeah, absolutely. If you want to go ahead and turn on your camera, we'd love to see it. 
Give us a little preview. Oh, wow, that looks great. So is that inside of a sleeve of some kind? Yes, it's inside of a sleeve. And I actually make one with resin, too. Wow, that looks great. That came out pretty nice. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, uh, mm -hmm. I bought the wrong canvas. Um, I bought the one that felt rough, and it had a lot of bubbles to it. And uh, when I came in, I printed it, it turned out pretty bad, like awful. <laughs> huh. I'd be interested to see what um, what kind of canvas you're talking about. I, I guess I'm not too familiar with all the different types of canvas. Um, so if you could send me a picture to my email address after we're done here, I'd like to uh, maybe help you troubleshoot that. And then we Thank have you. a hand raised from Ada. Could we, uh, could we hear from Ada? Hello. Hi, how's it going? Good. So I wasn't able to see you guys on the canvas uh, creation, but I did try a canvas. I'm not mm -hmm. sure if I put too much pre-tree or why does it come out looking like that? Let's see here. Oh, oh, I lost the preview. Mauricio, if you don't mind putting it back on. The, there we go. Um, did you print a white underbase on this one? I don't think so. Okay. Um, I would say dial back on your color strength. It looks like it's bleeding around the edges slightly. Uh, yeah. So it may not necessarily be a pre-treat problem, but maybe it's just too much ink. Because okay. it's, gonna, it's not going to absorb the same as how a shirt does. All right. So how uh, would I take back the ink on the rip software? Yeah, so in the direct rip towards the top of the page, there's going to be a color strength percentage, uh, and you would just dial that down. I would say in increments of 10% until you like the way it looks. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Sure thing. All right, so this one's done. I think I like the little one with the crown better, just as, like, design. Um, but we'll go ahead and move on along. The so now time the for the jeans. Was there another question? Okay. Um, mm -hmm. I had a question on pictures. Okay. On like photographs? Right. So I did this one today. And this is a photograph. I don't know if you can really see it. Hold on. Okay. Yeah, I can see it. Okay. But he wanted it on the black shirt. And I told him that the, the image was kind of dark and that it was going to come out dark. Um, is there any way that I can make the picture brighter, not on the rib software, or be able to tell the customer? Because I know it looks different on the software versus when you actually print it. Yeah, it depends. Let me see. So one thing that you might be able to do is take it into Photoshop, and you can just increase the brightness. Do you have Photoshop? Yes. So that would be under, off the top of my head, it would be under image. And then I think there's brightness and saturation just off the top of my head. I haven't worked with Photoshop in a while, but uh, off the top of my head, that's where you would find that tool to brighten up the image and then uh, try printing it and see if you like the result. Okay, thank you. So, yeah, just a question. So can you add a stronger white base to it to make it brighter? So a stronger white underbase, um, uh, particularly on photos, is kind of a double-edged sword. It may brighten up the image, but it might brighten up the highlight of like light reflection on uh, skin and other kinds of light sources, and it could overexpose it, so to speak, and you'll get kind of like a blotchy mess in those areas. So messing with the white underbase, particularly with photos, is uh, a little bit tricky. So I would generally advise you to adjust the actual image over uh, adjusting the settings in those cases. So is, is, there, is there any way that you could actually increase the black, blue, red, yellow in our software on the admin print, like in the machine? Yeah, so the direct rip, um, it, it's the same as what I advised for, um, I think it was Ada before. Uh, on the color strength in the direct rip, um, that would be adjusting how much color ink it's putting down. 
Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's always, it's always at a hundred percent. I mean, every time that I do any, any, any type of shirt, but is there's another way to add more to it. So if you want to add even more, there's color booster, or you can increase the resolution of your color layer. Where can I go for that? I mean, mm -hmm. yeah. So I'll set up the job for this okay. one, and I'll show you on, on, in the process. And then we had a question from Dallas in the chat. For the legs, do you use the top center or top left corner, or does it matter? So in this case, because we're using the sleeve platen, uh, we want to use top center so it'll center on the platen. And that'll be the case for any platens that you're using. Um, so let me go ahead and share my screen one more time, and then we'll uh, get you set up here with the settings. So this time we're going to do this one. We're going to go to quality, dark cotton, Top center, print setup, and choose the port. Properties, I'm just going to do a small mark. Uh, top of this image has plenty of space, so I don't need a margin. Device options. And this is where you would change the color strength, or I'm sorry, the, um, the color layer. Increase the resolution 2880 by 1440 is what you would be looking for. Um, so that so that also controls the ink amount. Yeah, so the resolution determines basically how slow it's going to print, or rather how many passes the print head needs to make in order so the to slower, the better. Certain... So so the sl the the higher resolution, the slower it's going to print, the more passes of ink it's going to put down to achieve the resolution that you're telling it to do. Thank you. Sure thing. All right, so I'm going to do the fuzziness at 15 again. 80% highlight. The reason that I'm not adding an underbase choke is because the outline is this kind of light gray, and I don't want to give it that like fuzzy edge on the outline. So we'll do the print. OK. And there we have it. If you guys have any other questions in the meantime, go ahead and drop it in the chat, raise your hand, and uh, we'll, we'll go ahead and continue, I think. I got a question for you. Sometimes, mm -hmm. yeah, sometimes when uh, I start doing shirts, I have a hard time getting ink into the shirt in the beginning. What, what can I do to prevent that? I'm not sure what you mean by getting ink into the shirt. So do you it, mean it, like... Yeah, yeah, it cannot bring a sample. Real quick, hold on. Okay. All right, hello. All right, let's see. All right. Yeah, yeah. So, so basically, it's something like this. All right, hang on one second. We're gonna make you big. I am big. Okay, let's see. Can you uh, pan it out a little bit? So, what's what's going on with this? That uh, I mean. This is uh, this is what happened. I mean, it happened to me at least three times before I start doing shirts, and and I st I did a head clean. Uh huh. And and, and your nozzle check is okay. A nozzle, yes, I did. I, I did the nozzle check and everything, and then it actually started doing this before I started printing shirts. Okay. Um, I, so what I did is uh, I started cleaning everything like I was done printing. And then I started back over again, and then it started printing. It started printing better. What that looks like to me is uh, improper height adjustment. And let me tell you why. You see how, um, if we can make it big again, I just want to uh, have it. This here, right? Yeah, so how it's kind of uh, blurred out, the color is on the outside of the outline. That's a key indicator that the print head was too far away from your print surface. Um, so what I want you to double check, um, because function rear is not foolproof, uh, there can be ways where it will adjust improperly. Such as, uh, here, let me get the adult platen on here and I'll kind of demonstrate. Um, okay. So here's what I expect probably happened. So after you printed your nozzle check, you 
you may have put your garment on there. What kind of garment is that? That's an interesting color. You like it? Rose petals. I'm just playing. <laughs> right, it's Gildan. Gildan, really? That's a. It's like a. It, it, at least through the camera, it looks kind of like, like part, like old parchment color. Yeah. Yeah. That's really interesting. Um, yeah. Okay. I just messed up a shirt, so. <laughs> so if we can get it on the close-up cam, I'll show you what I expect is happening. So you have your shirt tucked in. Uh, one of two things. Do you um, load your platen off of the printer and then put it on? Yes. I do it all okay. the time. Okay. Here's what I expect probably happened. You have this hanging down. And when you put it on there, uh, uh, let me see. I'm going to move the camera so that you guys can see Dana. it. Okay. So that ought to do. Yeah. So when you put it on, the, the sleeve will go underneath. So it's going to sit a little bit wobbly. Yeah. Um, and even though it's in the corner, it's not going to be sitting flat. So generally when this happens, one of two things will happen. When you adjust the height, um, in this case with the orientation I have it, the left side is raised up more than the right side. So the, when it adjusts the height, it'll start out really clear and then become blurrier as it goes down the slope, basically. Uh, and then basically you'll have a really nice crisp area here and then a blurrier and blurrier print over here. Alternatively, if it's at the front, and this is a severe example, yours might be a lot less severe than this. Yeah. Um, so it can raise it up at the front. So the height adjusts to the high point here and then as it prints, it'll get blurrier and blurrier. And you may not really notice if you're doing like a two inch margin, it'll basically start at the point where it would already be blurry. You don't get to see when it's clear. Um, the last option is when you do function rear, it adjusts between here and here. I don't know if you've noticed, it'll go yeah. down, come forward, and then it'll start adjusting from like right here and then check between this zone. So if there's a raised area of some kind, like let's say a little like wrinkle or something uh, in this area and it's not quite flat enough, uh, it'll adjust the height down a little bit more so that uh, when it prints, it doesn't get a head strike on that zone, uh, but you will still get a blurry print in the rest of that area. Uh, so that may be something to consider. I would say, um, especially because after a couple of prints, presumably you would have done another height adjustment uh, and it improved. So it's not something print head related uh, since it did just basically turn around randomly. Uh, so I highly suspect that a height adjustment is the culprit in your case. So, so um, it could be also the uh, nozzle, uh, not nozzle, the uh, print head. If you also see a blurry, am I right? It could be either, either or. How, how new is your printer? Uh, really new. <laughs> really new? Yeah, yeah I, don't, I don't think that would be the case. Um, you might see that at the end of a life cycle of a print head if it's like really, really dirty. Um, but presumably if, if the printer's still new, you're still doing your maintenance and everything like you were trained. So I don't suspect that to be an issue. Um, do you have an open support ticket? Uh, no. Okay, let me have you email some pictures to support at omniprintonline.com. Kind of summarize the same thing you told me. And then yeah. CC me as well in the email. And, okay. then, uh, and then we'll get you taken care of. Thank you. All right, sure thing. All right, so um, does anyone else have any other questions? Cannon, go ahead. Yeah, on that setting you did for the jeans, uh, what you said something about the black outline and that you weren't going to do something with the underbase. I didn't catch that one. Yeah, sure thing. So um, I actually skipped the um, the white uh, underbase choke oh, okay. um, across all of it because this image. Let's see. Let's get in the close up. This image has this little gray outline. Okay. And I want that to be a nice crisp line. If I were to choke the white underbase. It would probably, and because it's so thin, 
uh, likely you would just see maybe like half of that line nice and crisp uh, color and then the other half would be a little desaturated because it doesn't have enough white under base there okay got it and then also you did um i noticed it printed faster so you just did the regular setting on that right that's right yeah so for the gray ones and for the jeans i just did the standard settings and then on the black ones i did the 2880 white under base okay great thank you yeah sure thing the jeans turned out okay I think um, I might add a little bit more pre-treat next time that I do it. Uh, in the camera, it looks pretty good, but in person, it's mm, oh, there we go. Yeah, so it do it doesn't look you know awesome to me. Pants prints are kind of tacky to begin with. I don't think I've ever seen any prints on pants that I was happy with and say, oh yeah, I'm all about that, but that's kind of my personal taste, I guess. So I'm going to go ahead and let you guys go. Okay, guys, we're going to go ahead and let you go. You guys have a great Thanksgiving. We'll see you next week on Wednesday.